Hey y'all, this is 3D. Just wanted to do a little update. Been working on the garden a little bit. Uh, not much to show you right now. I'm pulling everything out and I got to revamp the, the soil. And since my tiller is disguised as a shovel, it takes a little more time and effort. So just kind of doing it in my spare time when I have energy. Uh, but I had a few disappointments with the garden this year. One of them I already talked about is the bush beans. And as soon as I get all this tore up um, and the soil revamped a little bit, I'm going to re be replanting for the fall. Um, I've got a lot of plans on what I want to put in for the fall. Uh, went through the squash and zucchini and pruned it back probably about 70%. And right now it's like 3.30 in the afternoon and it's like 92 degrees. So everything looks a little wilted. But I'm going to give it a chance I am going to be reseeding zucchini and squash but you can tell how long these these stems are that I pruned back and they're still putting off blooms and they're still producing uh, fruit you know squash zucchini so I'm gonna let them go I did replant um, a few mounds of squash and zucchini to be coming up and I'll give these a little bit of time and if they are being productive I'll let them go if they're not I'll pull them up and start replanting again one of the uh, uh, disappointments I had was with my tomatoes I Put them in buckets which is not a bad thing um, the reason I put them in buckets is so that I could move them around well I didn't realize that once they were full of dirt and uh, everything I couldn't move them and so they're planted in pretty sh shady areas which has not been very productive for tomato production. I have had nothing like the tomato production I had last year, which I had them in full sun last year in buckets, and they did very well. So that's kind of a lesson learned on the tomatoes. Um, the bells are doing well. As the cucumbers, they look a little droopy right now because it is hot and they're in full sun. But they've really taken off. And I'm planting more cucumbers for the fall just to have an abundance. And these bells have done well. They're always in full sun. I have a hard time with full sun out here because... There's so many trees. So, you know, I've been cutting trees for three years now, and uh, I feel grateful for the sunlight I do have. And the shade's important too, especially here in Texas. Um, it hadn't been this hot, it hadn't been very hot this year, so, uh, but it can get pretty hot, let me tell you. Um, out here at the Fugal culture. Uh, I went through yesterday and pruned this. I do have a few tomatoes, I mean, watermelons coming up. Y'all hear that? That's music to my ears. Anyway, <clears throat> and something I learned <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it kind of set you back to is see this watermelon over here it's in the cantaloupe section well 
I guess cross pollination um, affects the fruit. So the watermelons in the middle of the patch are yellow and they look just like cantaloupe. And the same way with the um, Mm. The melon. I, for, I always forget the name of this melon. It's a white melon. Uh, do do honeydew melon. Uh, the honeydew is yellow, just like a cantaloupe, and tastes just like kind of just like a cantaloupe. Now you get on the outskirts over here where these watermelons are, and they're red. They have. Uh, red meat, but the watermelons in the middle where the cantaloupe is planted is yellow Which they're all the same. I only planted three watermelon plants and they're all the same watermelon So the cross-pollination is Something I didn't think about when I planted all the melons out here together and I can't really save the seeds because you know of the cross pollination. I mean, I could, but I really don't want to. I've got extra seeds and I'll do something different next year. I'll separate the melons. So, but that's something to consider, maybe, if it matters. Anyway, um, I've got two more major projects. This is where I'm wanting to put my greenhouse and that's kind of like the next thing on the agenda uh, and that's my resource yard that's lumber that I'm going to be trying to use on my greenhouse um, there's a lot of dry rotted wood but I can use that wood to build frames with and just set on the ground and fill with dirt and plant. Um, I can use it to maybe build a some sort of uh, table where I can put soil in. But anyway, um, nothing goes to waste out here, that's for sure. So I'll be using as much as, of the lumber from the resource yard as I can on the greenhouse. I have hog panels over here that I've had for a year and a half with the intention to build a greenhouse and they've just kind of sat up over here waiting for me to get the energy and get inspired enough so I'll be using these hog panels on the greenhouse. There's uh, seven of them there, and I'm not going to use all of them because I do want to build trellises and go from there. And these right here, these are the, some of the first raised beds that I put in when I first moved out here. And they are in such deep shade that... Uh, Nothing really grows out here, so I'm going to be moving this soil and using this lumber in raised beds in sunnier areas. And then these poles right here, a friend of mine gifted these to me from a chain link fence. It's the top rail. So uh, I'm going to be using those also. Um, I just I, I will be, you just got to be creative on what you do and just try to make the best out of what you got. So anyway, I'm moving on to, <laughs> moving on to the plan, but it's my plan. I don't know, you know, I, <sighs> I don't go out much, and when I do, I'm always kind of shocked at the sheeple. Um, that might not be a nice term, but honestly, 
when I see people giving up their freedoms for a false security, I call them sheeple. So um, it's shocking to me sometimes, and it's a, it saddens me quite a bit, honestly. And sometimes I release those that I dump that onto my YouTube. So I'm moving on with my plan. I don't know what the plan is or what anybody else's plan is, but moving on with my plan. And uh, so I do uh, thank you all for all your comments because it really helps a lot and you're right there's nothing that I can do to uh, fix or change anything that's going on right now all I can do is put it in God's hands and sometimes I forget to do that and I, I have my faith in a greater uh, power and I appreciate the reminders anyway thank you all so much and I wish you all much love and peace thank you